Everybody ready, set, go. Rev it up and let's roll. There's a party in the fast lane. Got my hand. Chase Elliott. We keep waiting for Chase Elliott. A three-time runner-up, and he nearly won the 500 in February. So there's three guys that need a win, and they can make it happen. A lot of storylines we're going to continue to follow throughout the evening. But let's go pit side now with Dave Burns. This is it. The field coming through turn four for the final time before they get the green flag. Dale Earnhardt Jr. embarking on what could be a storybook ending to his career at Daytona International Speedway. He starts from the pole. The last time he did it at this track, he ended up in victory lane. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Chase Elliott, making up row one. The pace car has made its way to pit row. The field in the hands of Jr. Green flag in the air. We're underway from Daytona. Great perspective as we see the bat cam going down the back stretch at 100 miles an hour. That camera moves from one point to the next. Dale Earnhardt Jr. moved up the racetrack. Chase Elliott came down, fighting for the lead as they come out of four for the first time. Dale Jr. got such a great restart that he gave, had so much gap between he and the second row that when they ran him down, they ran him down at such a rate that he could not block Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott leads lap one. Chase Elliott has already led four laps in the blue and white number 24. Here was the latest conversation between him and his spotter, Eddie DeHaan. Fans are on the game. They need the push. This is 21. Temple. Yeah, that's good information. That would be a legitimate player. Richie Fallon Gustafson told me earlier today he's very good at this and he expects him to run up front all night after that great qualifying position, Marty. Michael McDowell, that's crew chief by Brad Parrott, by Todd Parrott. Todd Parrott, a Daytona 500 crew chief champion. So he's a really good road court, a really good super speedway cha uh, crew chief. Knows what he's got. Three wide, we're wrecking. Oh, around goes the 24 of Chase Elliott. He had help. Trevor Bain got caught up with him. The caution comes out. Damage to the left side. Of the 24 of Chase Elliott, damage to the six of Trevor Bain. Yeah, it's just not bad. Left rear, guys. Once again, it's, I think a situation where got three wide, and I'm not real sure Michael McDowell knew he was three wide. Uh, car jumped up on the outside of him. He went to the right. That pushed him back to the left, ended up getting into Chase Elliott. And that's the shot that shows how much these drivers move around on the backstretch. You see left to right, keep changing lanes. And like you mentioned, Michael McDowell in that row was three wide. I'm not sure Chase Elliott didn't think he wasn't clear of that row. I'm not sure he thought Michael McDowell was even a concern. Between the two, they made contact. And you see right here, you know, he, he gets moving. And there's nothing he can do. It's, it's spin to the right or spin to the left. Fortunately for the 24, he's spun to the left. There's still damage, but much less damage than if it had gone up into the outside wall. Parker. As the 24 of Chase Elliott leaves, he was very frustrated with the drivers around him. That is what, uh, in his opinion, caused things that went on right there. But the one thing was they worked a lot of the rear end of the car, but he mentioned to the crew that he thought the front end was killed. You can see the cowl flaps are gone out of there. That'll have to be put back in if he's to continue. Actually, those cow flaps where they're missing, they have the option to try to repair them and add a flat back in, but it has to be operational. The best thing for this 24 to do right now is just leave the hole open. It has to be open by the rules, Kelly, but they're doing the best they can to repair it. 
Casey Kane has had a fast race car all night long, and now he comes into pit road. He said he felt contact on the left side, so they're going to give him left side tires, but they also wanted to check that right side. You saw him checking for clears there. The team was worried he may have had a little contact with the wall. Casey did not report any. Obviously, a pretty fast stop there for the five, and he's got two new left side tires. And the right side's completely clean for Casey Kane. Daniel Suarez still out in front of the field. Matt Kenseth, stage two winner, running second. Jimmy Johnson, seven-time champion, is third as we go NASCAR nonstop. Point fingers right here. They got together, but... I mean, it's simple to me that I think Ricky Stenhouse has committed to the top. I think Kyle Larson was a lane down. He either did not know or thought he could protect against the 17. If I use the wall as a reference, the 17 is running straight. It's the 42 moving to the right, gets onto his bumper. But that's what you do. It's six to go at Daytona. You have to stricter plate track. And around goes the 77. Eric Jones slides into the infield. Also, the 11 of Denny Hamlin goes around. Caution has not come out yet. Now it does. Just pushing Clint Boyer. Gets up the racetrack a little bit. Now he's three wide. One car, Jamie Murray, moved down on the side of him, just pushed him to the side. I'm not sure what happened to the 11. I saw the 11 shoot out of the screen. Not sure what made him go to the left, but it's Jamie Murray, I think, just for some like reason darted to the left. Take a look at the 24 as well with the 11. As we see Eric Jones sliding. They continue to clean up around the 11 of Denny Hamlin. And Hamlin looked to have gotten some contact from the 24 of Chase Elliott. Hamlin was on his inside. Elliott looked like slammed into him. And you see Denny was trying to drive back. But then the fire from underneath the hood the top thought he needed to block that Stenhouse had such a run on the bottom he didn't get the right car block Stenhouse jr. white flag in the air one more time around Michael McDowell in the 95 running second a slide by the 24 of Chase Elliott that's before they get into turn one the caution hasn't come out yet they want him to be able to race back to the checkered flag Well, the list is long. Winless drivers and big names. You see them down there. Denny, Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Kenseth, Dale Jr., Chase Allen. The list is long. Who will bake through? Who will guarantee a spot in the playoffs tonight? 24 of Chase Elliott able to get by the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Elliott up to eighth now. Another driver searching for his first win. Chase Elliott just 21 years old. The son of Bill Elliott, Hall of Famer. And in Dawsonville, the pool hall at Dawsonville had a bell and a siren that every time Bill Elliott would win a race, they would sound that siren. They would sound the bell at the pool hall in Dawsonville. And they have said that when Chase Elliott gets that first win and whatever wins he's able to get, they will do it for Chase as well. So Chase Elliott still looking to get to victory lane, but everyone back in Dawsonville still cheering on this young man. And they've sounded that siren when he's won in the Xfinity Series. They would love to do it tonight. Bill and uh, Sid, Cindy, his mom and dad, not here this evening. He said they decided to stay home in Dawsonville this evening. Chase's car has been pretty good. The problem is, it takes a while to get going. In the initial part of the run, they struggle a little bit, but this part of the run is where they come on. Just got past Daniel Suarez a moment ago. We're actually trying to get around Daniel Suarez for the next position, but the 24 has been very strong all evening. Alan Gustin told me he has to be very aggressive, but Chase very good for a young guy being aggressive.
Shots are fired. The intensity about to ramp. Kurt Busch won the Daytona 500 this year. Been tough riding ever since. Looking to turn that around today. Row six, we have Chase Elliott and Kevin Harvick. Chase Elliott leads virtually every category at Hendrick Motorsports this year, except for wins. Zero in that column. Trying to change that today. And back in row seven, the Middletown, Connecticut native, Joey Logano. He needs a win. This is a great opportunity at a racetrack where he got his first win. On Friday night, Main Street Speedway was completely blocked off, shut down for a fan fest, and Rutledge Wood was there. I'm standing on Main Street in downtown Speedway, Indiana, USA, but don't worry, there's no cars because the road's blocked off today for FanFest. We are right across the street from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Where I'm standing right now, I mean, talk about history. I can see four different race shops, but what I really see right now are fans, fun, and good times, plus some drivers. Let's check it out. Go! One minute to do it, the cookie challenge. Give a round of applause. Come on, let's make some noise. We know at home you get a lot of time playing kids games with Keelan. To be out here at a fan fest like this to do games with the kids, yeah. for you, is this just home run? Oh, this is a 100% home run. Yeah, this is, like, this is like being at home. I think the great part about these types of events is there, there's no competition at the racetrack happening, so you're out of that train of thought. So I would consider these more quality interactions, Yeah. and we get to act like kids. Well, Kevin, you guys got to cheer them on. Yes. Do we count that? Do we count that? When you get to have a day off from the racetrack and get to come have fun with kids, is, is this the best kind of Friday for you? Yeah, well, especially when you're not getting yelled at by the yellow shirts. You know, that's always good. It's nice because um, you're only about three years older than most of these kids, so this is good. Yeah, two and three quarter. Please. Yeah, two yeah. and three quarter, but who's counting? You're here with your peers. I see that. Hey, just remember, don't stop for anybody. That's what the yellow shirts do. you got to do the same thing. Elliot has one here, not the one in the field. It was Bill Elliott back in 2002. So here it is, Bill Elliott. This took uh, driving for Ray Evernham, took yes. Ray Evernham Dodge uh, to victory lane. It was certainly special. Uh, Bill Elliott, you talk about the championship drivers, but look at this. That is Chase Elliott, who's in the field today as what, maybe a seven year old little boy. Yeah, it's that's a little seven-year-old. I'm gonna say five or four or five. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, might, yeah, I didn't yeah, do the inc math. Incredibly, incredibly young. Did not kiss the bricks. Has made comments about. I don't know why I didn't kiss him. I missed that opportunity. Wants so much to get back and, and kiss the bricks. But that is what is great about NASCAR in this sport. Um, Dale Jarrett's father, my father, the families that have continued generation after generation, and not only in drivers. So many times we get lost in the drivers, uh, but crew members and, and spotters and, and scorers and so many people, NASCAR officials, it's handed down. NASCAR is a sport, but for a lot of us, it's a way of life. It's currently Kenseth running in the seventh position, chasing after Kurt Busch. Behind them, just a few spots, is the 24 of Chase Elliott, Kelly. And Rick, we're keeping an eye on Chase Elliott because we just heard a radio transmission moments ago. It sounds like there could be an issue. Got a problem, like I'm out of gas. Clear your bolts. 15.1, like I'm down a cylinder. Steve, if you're his crew chief, what do you do in this scenario? Well, I think you heard Alan Gustafson asking about the bolts. You have a checklist. Most crew chiefs have an emergency checklist, really. By what the driver says, you kind of go through it. If this, then that. If he says he's down on power, these are the questions you ask. Volts, fuel pressure. Try to diagnose as much as you can. You know a yellow is coming in eight more laps. Try to gain that information to try to gather a plan. But it can be very frustrating because Jeff, Chase Allen is trying to make laps, stay out of everyone's way, and diagnose this issue. He's currently 13th in points. He does not have a race win. So when you look at the point battle, if you have a problem early in races, you don't have a chance to earn those stage points. That can that can really hurt a team like this. So trouble early is very costly. And you hope it's something that's repairable. I mean, if it's electrical, maybe it's a battery issue. If it's fuel, maybe there's something you can tweak. But normally, unfortunately, a higher percentage of the time, it is normally a terminal issue. So we'll have to just see what the 24 finds out. Yeah, by the voltage number that he gave, it didn't sound like it was a battery issue or something that was easily fixed. That seemed like plenty of volts. 
Well, this is a scenario I talked to crew chief Alan Gustafson about, and he was dreading it. They're kind of in an awkward position in this playoff spot because he said, we kind of just want to stay status quo, knowing that we could have a mechanical failure, something that could hurt us, but we also don't want to do anything too risky and take ourselves out of it. I can tell you right now, Chase Elliott has just come over to say he now has smoke inside the uh, cockpit of that car. Cannot be good. His last lap was 56 seconds. Race leader Kyle Busch, 50 seconds. He's losing six seconds to race leader Kyle Busch. And Chase Elliott, that 24, starting with a normal pit stop, but then they're going to go under the hood and try to diagnose his issue. Chase saying he didn't miss a gear. He didn't rev it up anything on his end. He said everything was normal. He's also said he's never felt a car do this before, so he doesn't know what it could be. We heard him reading off those numbers. Uh, they've got the best to keep the car running while they try to diagnose it. Uh, Alan Gustafson saying it could be a plug wire. You saw the race off pit road and brought to you by Kroger Click List. We'll give you an update on where everyone came out when we come back. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by STP. Helping engines run better, longer since 1954. And by Subway Restaurants. It has been documented the 24 of Chase Elliott knew he had a problem. They lifted the hood, tried to find and diagnose what that problem was, couldn't find it. And just last lap, smoke starts rolling out and the engine expires for Chase Elliott. That's a disheartening scene right there for the crew. You know, the engine manufacturer is going to feel awful about the failure of the team. I mean, you're never really even got a chance, Jeff, to see what kind of car you had. It's such a huge race, too. It's such a letdown to have a problem at the Brickyard, one of the biggest races of the year. Kelly. And I can tell you that Alan Gustus and the crew chief was working with the engine guys to still come up with a diagnosis, even as the engine blew. At one point, they had talked about changing the ECU. Uh, obviously, Chase now on his way back to the garage where they hope to find out what the cause of the issue was, and we're going to also try to get a word with Chase. It's the first time that Chase Elliott has ever had an engine failure to where he wasn't able to finish a race. Kelly. Well, it's an engine failure that will end this race for Chase Elliott. Chase back in the garage now. What more do you know? Uh, we don't really know. Some type of motor issue. Went down a cylinder and then started blowing smoke out the pipes. So I don't know what it was. We'll dig into it and see. But uh, I mean, I, I've been racing. Hendrick engine since 2013, and this is the first engine problem I've ever had. So I'll take those odds all day long. Still have the best uh, engine shop in the in the business, and uh, stuff's going to happen. We're pushing it, uh, as everyone is. So we'll uh, move on to next week and see uh, what we got there. Yeah, his first engine failure in the Cup Series, Rick. Wise before his years, that's for sure. The driver of the 24, Chase Elliott, still looking for his first win in the Monster Energy Cup Series, just 21 years old, the son of Hall of Fame Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia. Thank you for the way, the truth, and the life that is Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. Good Marty. Yes, welcome to that, right, Dave? Chase Elliott on pit road, said his cart's too tight, rolling into th one, also rolling into three, and he stalls it, trying to leave his pit stall. That's going to cost him some time on pit road. Valuable seconds lost on pit road for the 24 car, Rick. Chase Elliott, 15th in the championship standings, in the playoff standings, we should say. 55 ahead of Clint Boyer. They feel fairly comfortable where they are points-wise, Dave, but they also would love a victory to assure themselves, just like their teammate Casey Kane did, getting in with a win at the Brickyard last week. You know, I asked Chase the toughest part about this racetrack for a young driver. He said the tunnel turn. It's the one turn in NASCAR I still haven't figured out. He said that's probably why I'm not so good at Indianapolis. Chase Elliott back in the fifth position, Kelly, and a lot of people in the garage area thought this morning that he would be the man to beat this afternoon, including our very own Del Jared, who picked him before the race. Hey, guys, a moment ago, Chase Elliott was in the fourth position. He came down pit road to change tires. He said he felt like he ran over something on the racetrack and he was going to have a flat tire. He said just to be precautionary, they came down pit road, but all the tires were indeed up on that 24. Chase said, hey, guys, I'm sorry. I just felt like it was better to be safe than sorry. 
And Rick, you're going to see these top four pit right here. Alan Gustafson really noticing what happened with Denny Hamlin and his team. They pitted earlier, gained a little time. So these four pitting right now, sort of in the race of their own. They're going to pit here on the 24 camp, hoping they can gain some time on those other guys they're racing. Uh, we heard about, you know, Dale Hart Jr. trying to diagnose the engine. Well, Brad Kozlowski didn't even have time to let him know whether the car was loose or tight. A lot of corners to break down here. And here we go. Pit Road is about to be frantic. Let's kick things off with Kelly Stavis. Kel? And Martin Truex Jr. in the 78 pitting from the second position. This is a pit crew that's only been intact for just one week. This will be their second race together. Martin Truex Jr. There is Chase Elliott on the inside in the Sun Energy One Chevrolet. Ready to go. About to enter the Geico restart zone. Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott on the front row. But remember, they have not pitted. They're working a different strategy. McMurray's on the same. Ready to go here at the Glen. Let's do it. Good restart, Chase Elliott. Here comes the 42 on the outside. Kyle Larson, but he, does he blow it? He tucks it back in just on the other side of the curb. Jamie McMurray's able to grab that second position away, and here comes Daniel Suarez. Larson throws it away on the restart. Chase Elliott capitalizes. So does Jamie McMurray. So does Daniel Suarez. Kyle Larson able to get back on track in the fourth position as everybody steams up the back straightaway, getting set for a run through the bus stop. Chase Elliott with a big lead into the bus stop here. Continues to keep that lead as they go to the exit. Jay McMurray not able to make up any ground, if anything, losing ground as they come into the carousel here. Looks like Chase Elliott is feeling really good about the race cars. You see, actually, Kyle Larson get very loose in the center of the carousel. Neil handling car there, Jeff. Yeah, Kyle Larson lost a lot of ground. You saw how free he got and how quickly Matt Kenseth closed that gap. So they're going to battle side by side. Michael McDowell, Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr., remember, he pitted. He's trying to work his way back to the front. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Steve, that Levine Family Racing, K-Love 95 of road racing specialist Michael McDowell. He might just be a player. Yeah, he was, and he sounded very confident in his car, and I think he's showing it early. Leaders through the short straight away. Now up through turns two, three, and four. Harvick, Sardinessa, Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth is a three-time winner here at Michigan. A win today, though, could perhaps be his biggest win ever at this racetrack. Well, how about Chase Elliott starting inside row three, the 21-year-old son of Hall of Famer Bill Elliott. Three consecutive second-place finishes here at Michigan. Is today the day he breaks through? All right, it's time for Jeff Burton to dial up and welcome in and have a chat with the driver of the 24, Chase Elliott, who's come up shy here a few times, Jeff, hasn't he? Chase, it's Jeff Burton up at the NBCSN booth. You with us? Yeah, buddy, go ahead. Well, bud, you and your team are in a tight battle trying to make these playoffs. I'm curious how you balance the aggressiveness of trying to win this race versus not making a mistake and hurting yourself in points. Yeah, hey, thanks for reminding me. No, it's been uh, it's been a fun year, obviously, uh, up and down. We've had some fast cars, though, and just got to kind of take it a week at a time. I feel like for us, we got a solid Napa Chevy so far this weekend, and just going to do our job today and try to let the rest take care of itself. Well, Chase, I know you've come really close to winning races here. Do you feel like this is one of your best racetracks, and do you think you have a solid chance today? I think we have a good shot every weekend, or I'd stay home. So, yeah, I think we got a good shot today if we all do our job like we know how to do them. Well, thank you and your team so much for spending some time with us. Good luck. Thank you. I like that answer, Lee. Yeah. He didn't think he had a chance to win. He would just stay home. I like the confidence. That's what you're looking for out of your race car driver. We're going to ride along with Chase. Jeff, you just talked to him. Well, he'll be carrying the Chevrolet onboard camera all day. Time now to take a look at our Ram Guts and Glory. Well, Lee, I think it all starts 
with the guts to make the restart that you need to have. You see right here, Chase Elliott so close to winning, just could not get the restarts that he needed to get. The entire front row out of control, though. If you're going to win this race, you're going to have to have great late race restarts. And they're so hard to practice. You just have to learn as the race goes. And Kyle Larson right here, he shows him a bit of a lesson. This side draft right down on his side. Pull away from him and watch this 42 power by going into turn one. If I'm down here in the 24 uh, of Chase Elliott, you know, they're in the best position amongst non-winners to get into the playoffs. When I talked to Alan Gustus and the crew chief, he said, look, we're not in a good spot at all. In fact, we're in a very vulnerable spot. It's going to be a dogfight. I don't think we're in a must situation yet, he said, but we have zero margin for error. I'm absolutely not comfortable with the position that we're in. Right now, Chase comfortable with his race car, though. Dave? Great message as we said earlier to you, Jeff, when you dial him up before the green flag saying, I believe I can do it here. And Steve, when we were speaking to Alan Gustafson, his crew chief the other day, he said, you know, from those restarts, those poor restarts, yes, it was frustrating, but we've learned. We feel we've learned from those here. Well, and I think the story's different on each of the three. If you go back to last year, I think, Jeff, you and I agreed that the 24 had a winning car, that he ended up not winning because of those restarts. But earlier this year, he really had a fifth or sixth place car that he found a way to battle up into the second place position. So while it wasn't a winning restart, I considered it a net gain. He could have lost many more positions starting on the inside row. Yeah, and let's remember, Chase Elliott was a rookie last year. He did not have a lot of track time, did not have a lot of seat time. Restarting trying to win a race is very, very difficult, and he didn't do it well. But he will get better, and if you give him that position again, I bet he'll execute yep. on it. Kelly. And now you see Chase, Chase Elliott bringing his car to pit road. He said as he got behind the 22 of Joey Logano, his car was really unstable. But then they're in the closing laps before he came to pit road, said it was just getting really, really tight. Alan Gustafson thinks that the sticker tires for Goodyear tires are going to help that condition. And Chase Elliott is on his way. Well, man, we're going to let you get back to work and let you focus. Have a good rest of the race, buddy. Thanks for taking time. Connecting with Eric Jones with thanks to NASCAR Heat 2 video game. We'll see what Stage 3 has in store for him. The kid who grew up in Byron, Michigan. And sadly, his father, Dave, passed away last year. Eric has made the family name very proud. Happened here with the 24. jacket seemed to mess up the side skirt or is today the, the day, day is exactly. today the day chase elliott ends up with the right restart at the right time from the right position he had the right position last year couldn't make it happen he was on the inside of the spring fought hard to second now he's in the outside lane road to a great restart at his best track a win could put him in the playoffs well jeff we just broke down restarts in turn one and two but you said it the first thing you have to do is get a launch and get out of the restart zone. We go back to last year, Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott on the outside is controlling this race, and look what happens. He gets on the gas, Larson gets on the gas. Both cars spin the tires, get run into from behind, somehow continue to go straight. That is what can go wrong on restart. Yeah, we talk so much about what happens in turn one, but the launch is what's so important. And at this racetrack, with these hard tires. These are hard tires. They have to be hard to, to withstand the friction that in the speed. That makes it very difficult. So we've talked about how do you launch? How do you get a good restart? And it's, it's very difficult. It's all about timing. So as we ride along with Chase Elliott, he has to decide when the 78 is going to go and kind of take a chance. You can see right there, he, he responded to the 78 rather than anticipating what the 78 was going to do and that's how the 78 got so far ahead now listen it's not easy it's it's a it's a little bit of a guess game right you have to guess when that 78 is going and you got to be gaining speed on him as he goes it's very difficult to do but if chase elliott's going to win this